I think the conclusion you have to reach is that water is going to be perceived as being much more valuable than before, and not just in California, but everywhere, and that has big implications for the future of, of agriculture in California. You think you know about water scarcity because you've experienced it, because you've experienced the politics of water scarcity. But we've just scratched the surface, particularly as it becomes a more global issue. What all this means is that water is likely to be the resource that is going to be most scarce in your future. So you need to be thinking about developing new techniques and new sustainable practices, not only for energy, fuel, and food, but also water. You've probably all heard of water described as the new oil. I think that's a gross mischaracterization because there are substitutes for oil. There are no substitutes for water. Water is going to be much more important than, than oil. And because it's going to be global, it offers both a real challenge and a real opportunity for agricultural producers. There's a quote from uh, Sandia National Laboratories. By 2025, which is less than 15 years away, more than half the nations of the world will face freshwater stress or shortages. And by 2050, as much as 75% of the world's population could face freshwater scarcity. We are experiencing a global problem with water. And political conflicts are going to grow out of this. And governments are going to look for scapegoats. And a perfect example of that is India with Coke and Pepsi-Cola. As India has run into freshwater scarcity, they've been looking for somebody to deflect, on whom to deflect the blame. And two of the groups that they picked were Coke and Pepsi. And they told them that they had to become water neutral. Now, that's not a term you've probably heard before, but you will in future. Water neutrality meant for Coke and Pepsi that the Indian government told them that they could not take a liter of water out of the community resources unless they put a liter of water back into the community resources. And if you think about what Coke and Pepsi sell, that's a neat trick. And they did it mostly by offsets, but they did it. And that is where we are going, that we are going to reach a world where taking out your, is going to have to be balanced by putting back in one form or another. As well, we're going to see political conflicts grow between user groups, for example, farmers and cities. You're already experiencing that. It's going to continue to grow in importance. Between different governments in different parts of the world, and I think probably the most direct one is going to be between water-rich Canada and water-seeking America. But there's an upside for farmers, for California farmers. If you can learn to husband your water even better than you do today, if you can learn, use techniques, for example, from the Israelis, developed by the Israelis, to optimize the use of water, you can increase your exports around the world. This is from a book called Water, which I highly recommend. One warning occurred in 2006 when, for the first time in many years, India was forced to import large quantities of wheat. And they had to import the wheat because they didn't have the water to grow it, not because they didn't have the land or the farmers. Textile plants have been forced to shut down, and information technology companies have moved away from Bangalore over water shortages and undependable supplies. As more and more parts of the world become water hungry, that means the demand for food production in other parts of the world that can manage their water will increase. There is a real opportunity for you to ex implicitly export water through your food. And I would be looking at that as one of the things you look at when you decide what it is you're going to grow and how you're going to grow it.